Claus, thank you for coming out. Uh, the workshop tonight is going from stress to ease. I had to think that I get that right. I don't want to go from ease to stress. <laughs> so, so uh, how many people have never come to this kind of workshop before with me? Like half the people here are cool. Okay, so I'm going to give a little bit of background around me. Uh, I, am, I call myself a belief shifter. So my job is actually to shift your beliefs. And uh, the, re the, the thing, bleh. I call myself that because I work directly with your subconscious beliefs. So the thing I found is that your beliefs create your reality. And uh, everything that's going on in your life is because you believe this is the best thing for you right now. And I know consciously you're saying, no, no, things could be better. You know, more money would be good, more travel would be good. But at a subconscious level, everything is absolutely perfect. And that's why your life looks the way it looks. So if you're going through a lot of stress, it's because at a subconscious level, you think you need to go through that much stress. And uh, I came to this because when I was 22 years old, I got revving their car outside. Um, I got rheumatoid arthritis and I suffered in pain, uh, joint inflammation, joint deformity for years and years and years uh, until I went to this program called the Mind Therapy where I talked to this guy for uh, a couple of weeks and he went through my entire life and then once we were done he said, so this is what I found out. He said, when you were really young, your mom got sick and as a little eight-year-old kid, you decided you need to take care of your mom, you, need to be, you needed to be responsible for her. And then once you became responsible for your mom, you felt you needed to also be responsible for your brother and sister because your mom couldn't take care of them. And then from there, you just started adding more people on, your dad, your cousins, your friends, until you had this belief that you need to be responsible for everyone in your life. And, uh, and I looked at him and said, well, I don't think I'm responsible for anyone in your life. Because, no, I know you don't think that positive, uh, consciously, and you probably don't act that way, but at a subconscious level, you feel you're responsible for everyone in your life. And I'm like, well, what does that got to do with having arthritis? And he said, well, you don't want to be responsible. And if you're in bed in pain all the time, you don't need to be responsible for anyone. So the arthritis is a solution for a problem you don't even realize that you have. And I said, okay, that's kind of freaky. So, but if that's the case, then from now on, I'm not going to be responsible for anyone but me. I woke up the next morning, all the pain, all the inflammation gone out of my body. Okay, now the damage was still there, but you know, I was suddenly in a place where I could walk properly, I could go and live a normal life again, and it was just amazing. Overnight, the arthritis left my body. So, um, and uh, speaking of the damage, some of you guys were like, what's going on with the arm? Uh, so, just another thing of going from stress to ease. Uh, the damage in the arm was such that, uh, actually, as far as the arm is away from my body right now, that's how far I could actually move it before. That was the full range of my mobility going off to the side. And uh, I lived with that and it was frustrating and it was stressful. And I was trying to heal myself through energetic means, through natural means. Uh, but one, things, one thing I teach all my students is be open to all possibilities. And I realized I wasn't being open to Western medicine. So, um, my hips were actually in the same condition as the arm, there was very little mobility, and I've had both of them replaced, and now I've just got my shoulder replaced. And, uh, you know, uh, I guess like a year, year and a half ago, like this would be like, like the farthest I could bend, and now I can just like completely come down and go up, and so this is a much better life, a much less stressful life, and it's because I said, you know, I've got to be open to all possibilities. So whether it's energy, whether it's naturopath, whether it's uh, Western medicine, I just sort of say, what's going to be best for me? What's going to have the best outcome? And then I start going in that direction. So, but you can see one belief caused me to have years and years of arthritis. And you have to look at your lives and say, okay, there's all this stress going on. Why do I believe I need to have this stress in my life? And when you really start to contemplate it, the answers start to show up. And believe me, sometimes the answers don't seem to make sense. Like if, if someone said, well, you created arthritis so that you don't have to be responsible, I'm like, well, that's a stupid thing to do. Why, why don't I just say, you know, I'm not gonna be responsible. But at a subconscious level, you don't think you have these choices, right? We think we, there's only certain things we can do. We feel like we're, like we're kind of trapped. And we also get bombarded 
with stories from other people in our lives, from our parents, from the news, from our friends. And you know, one of the big stories is you have to work hard to succeed, right? And if you believe you have to work hard to succeed, like think of that statement. That means that's your only choice, right? And so I used to work my ass off to succeed. I used to be under a lot of stress and, and, and sometimes not stress, just joy because I felt so good that I was working my ass off. Um, you know, and I'd, and I'd be telling people, yeah, I pulled another all-nighter last night, <laughs> just like burning myself out, but working really hard. And then I realized, well, wait a sec, I don't have to work hard to succeed. And when I say that, I'm not saying, okay, now you're suddenly gonna have this life where you don't ever work hard ever again. You have to be open to all possibilities. So now I have a life where I work my ass off sometimes. I do nothing other times. I relax, I have fun sometimes. And it's just, it just much more of a flow. And it's neat because before, whenever I was working, money was coming in. Whenever I wasn't, money wasn't coming in. Now, sometimes, you know, when I'm working, money's definitely coming in, but sometimes when I'm not working, I'm still seeing money come in. I mean, I'm like, this is a much easier way to live. I like this, I prefer this to the old way. So it, it comes down to getting out of the stories that we were taught and, uh, and getting rid of these beliefs that are keeping you stuck. So what we're going to do tonight is this is a very interactive workshop and I've got a hot seat here. So I'm going to have people come up into the hot seat and tell me about the stress that's going on in their lives. And we're going to, I'm going to talk to each person. And when I talk to you, I can tell when your conscious beliefs match your subconscious beliefs. And whenever they don't, you're lying. Now I don't give a crap if you're lying to me, but if you're lying, you're technically lying to yourself and you don't even realize it. So I'm going to call you and say, okay, that's reading is true or that's not reading is true. If it's not reading is true, we're going to dig down to the actual belief that's causing that to be a lie. When we get to that belief, I'm going to say, are you willing to destroy that belief? If you say yes and you mean it, the belief gets snuffed out in that instant. I may also ask, are you willing to step out of that story? As I said, we're picking up stories from all these other places. You don't have to stay in the stories. You can just step right out of them and your reality will change. I have been in a lot of stories that didn't work for me. I've been in a lot of stories that do work for me. Uh, I was actually amused because I got a lift here tonight because I can't drive. And one of my stories is I always get a spot right in front of the building so I can do my workshop. My driver though did not have that story. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you actually have to park across the street. <laughs> so, But luckily I got dropped off right in front of the door. So that still worked for me. Uh, but I've also had bad stories. I had the story that whenever I crossed the border, I would get checked by customs. No matter what border it is, no matter what country it is, I would get checked by customs. And I, the story was there since I was 19 years old and I had the justification for the story, it's because I'm black. They love to check black people at the border. And then when we had 9-11, I'm black and I have a Muslim name. Oh my God, this is getting worse. And so here I am getting checked, getting checked. And then finally I started learning energetic magic and I'm learning about stories. And I'm like, wait, this is a story. I keep telling everyone a story. Part of me loves the story because I get that feedback from people when I tell them, like, I got checked again. They're like, oh man, again? It's so rough, that life you have. And I'm like, yeah. And you, and you know, even when things suck, because you're stuck in the story that everything sucks, you love to tell that story. You get empowered telling that story to other people about how rough your life is, that you actually feed off the sympathy you get from people. And so you anchor that story in and go through it over and over again, because at a subconscious level, that feedback from people, that sympathy, that those reactions are better than the, I'm, are, I'm sorry, not better, are worth going through the crap you're going through in your life. So when I said, you know what, I'm done with the story, I'm gonna step out of it, that was six years ago, I haven't been checked to the border and I've traveled many, many times since then. So this is the power of just making that decision, making, setting that intention, I'm stepping out of the story. I'm destroying that belief. Now, when I work on you guys, I'm actually surprised it hasn't happened yet. Um, I can, my body reacts to energy shifts in the room. So when you start to shift, when anyone in the room starts to really start shifting energy, I'm gonna end up yawning or I'm gonna end up coughing. And I need to tell you guys this right up because sometimes I've got someone here and they're pouring out their life to me and they're, it's a big emotional thing and I'm yawning in their face. I'm not, I'm not bored. I'm just actually letting the energy shift. 
and and I'm not sick. You know, I've I've been I got sick last year for the first time in like six years, which is kind of an interesting thing. But other than that, you know, the coughing is always energy moving. So uh, be prepared for that. If I ever say ow, it's because we've hit a topic that you don't want me to touch. And you're basically sending energetic daggers at me to say, get off this topic, stop talking about it, I don't want to change it, I don't want to shift it. And those are usually the topics that really anchor us into whatever situation we're in. The stress, the pain, the struggle. So uh, we're going to work hard to get rid of those particular beliefs. So does this make sense to anyone? Does anyone have any questions? Wow, okay, we're good. So, uh, so just so you know, this we're I'm doing the Facebook Live, but it's just for the first person, and then we're going to shut off the camera. So, if anyone is brave enough to be on Facebook Live and get work done, we have a volunteer already. Whoop, get, come on up. <laughs> I know I can project, but oftentimes people here don't. Okay, so what's the issue? Can you hear me? You can no longer hear me? Wow. You can usually hear me. Okay. Okay. I've done this many times without the mic. This is <laughs> You started oh, them with the mic. I started with the mic. Okay, got it. All right, so what's the issue? Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, so there's a few things happening um, right now, and so, um, um, <clears throat> but I want to say that it, they all kind of <coughs> sort of surround the, um, the um, like the, I don't know, like the idea, there's been a whole bunch of stuff happening since since last since like last summer. So I moved up from Vancouver, I did a busking tour all the way out west. It totally got screwed up. Um, the guy that I was living with was an alcoholic, and I didn't know he was an alcoholic. But then I left, and it was crazy. Um, and then I ended up couch surfing, couch surfing, couch surfing, looking for like an artist warehouse to move in with other artists so that I can work with my, you know, work on my, my dance paintings and my music um, and, and the yoga and, and the stuff that I do um, and sort of not have to leave that, or if I have to leave to work to whatever, make money or whatever, or if, you know, at least I can be in, in the space where I'm living and, you know, creating rather than going out because I've done it before and it doesn't really work. And so, um, but I didn't find that. And then I ended up getting uh, kind of taking a real sort of crazy chance to uh, listen to these these black guys that were, um, they were uh, ident identi identity, uh, into like identity uh, theft and um, fraud and stuff like that. And they painted a little nice story for me and they said, okay, you know, it's not that, don't worry, you know, um, we won't, you, you know, the chances of you getting caught if we do this, da, 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 nothing. Anyways, I ended up getting caught <laughs> in, in the bank um, and the, the guy that set me up was outside and he got talked to by the other cop. I got arrested. Um, I spent a night in, in, in the cell. Um, they let me out the next day, but they took my passport. Well, they, they, they required me to give them my passport, um, so which is now in um, holding of the Canada, or, uh, Canada passport. And uh, last year when that happened, um, like two days before that, I was planning to go and dance at a club in Ottawa that is like it's a showgirl club, it's not, it's nothing, it's not like whatever, it's a clean club compared to um, everything else. So I was gonna go there and then I was gonna go to Montreal and then from there I was gonna come back and then I was gonna head to Burning Man, which is like this huge festival. I'm sure you guys have heard of it and it's really like 
all about creating to the extreme and you're surrounded by a bunch of um, you know people that are all in the same you know there there and it's like bring your own thing it's all about self-reliance bring your own stuff create your own thing and you just you know it's about being there with yourself and with your space so that got totally sideswiped then um, so at the moment I'm like I'm like uh, in, I'm staying at a, a friend's house. I was staying at, um, I was renting a room at Queen of Dufferin. The landlord was crazy. He, I invited um, this guy that I've been sort of connecting with. He's a DJ. We met on December 1st. I invited him over there to stay and rent the room, rent, rent the extra room that was there. And the guy that rented the house was like, no, no, no. And then uh, like a couple days later, he was like, no, it's fine. I got nobody else to rent it. Da, da, da. Okay, sure. But he has to pay this much. And then Christmas Day, he freaked out on, on the guy because he wasn't happy about some little thing or whatever. And then it was like this whole thing, like got to kick him out. So he um, was like threatening him and threatening me. And I was like, what are you doing? And then he threw an ax through the bathroom door. Um, while he was in the bathroom taking a poo and I was out of the house at the time and then when I came back I couldn't get back in the house so I had to call the cops. The cops were like well we can't do anything because he owns the house but that technically is a second apartment upstairs so you guys don't have to leave either but we suggest you should leave. So then we left and then it's been this whole crazy thing you know he's now in a homeless shelter and I like staying at um, this guy's house in St. Lawrence Market, which is it's nice and everything. He was a nice guy, but he like, ha, you know, he just broke up with a dancer that was like, it's like all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, so what did you, and I'm like, oh, no, I don't want to do this. Like, you know, so I would like to just get into my own place or get into my own room at least or something um, where I'm not being, not just that, but like, it's just like get into my own space where I'm not subject to like someone being like, oh, you can't have, I don't want any guys here. It's like, what are you renting a room for? And then it's like, why do I want to rent a room? It's like, I'd rather just have my own bachelor suite or whatever. But it's like this whole rent thing, this double thing in Toronto and uh, anyways, yeah. So, and so work has been really kind of on and off because I have to do, um, because of what happened with this court thing, it's really weird. Um, so I had to get a lawyer for something that I basically didn't do or didn't get anything out of. Like I got arrested in the bank, guy was there, I got thrown in jail for the night. Next day I'm out, who knows where the guy is, but they know his name and they have him down on the paper as a suspect. But my lawyer said to me, oh, well, what do we care about the suspect for? We're not looking, da 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 da, you're the one who went in there. But you know what, it's like, these guys, then I said to someone, I said like, you know, they're, they're, they, they think that they're just going to, they're just putting me on, they're gonna give me a, um, they're offering me like, not a suspended sentence, not a criminal record, but a, um, like, a, what is the other one? It's like, not a suspended sentence, but a, he, uh, for, two, for two years I got to be on uh, you know probation and then I s talked to someone who is who's a you know who's taken law and he said oh well um, that's kind of iffy because like they can they can try to like use you to like try to find you and I'm like really so now I'm, I'm being I feel like I'm being pitted in some like crazy like you know scam thing that's going on between like all this higher stuff and it's like okay so we got a ritzy egg africa over here we got, you know i don't know it's just crazy so and also yeah anyways okay sorry okay do you love the stories you're creating in your life no not See, at all that's not coming up as true at all yeah okay and you were in such joy telling the stories to everyone about what's going on in your life because yeah. <laughs> okay so this, this is the is thing but this, this is the thing, what would your life be like if all of those dramatic stories weren't there? Way, way more, like, in tune with what I am, like, you know, like my vision and what I'm, like, about, 
not this is not what I'm about, you know. So see that's still not coming up as true. All right. So I know you have a conscious vision of what, how you want things to be. But at a subconscious level, the drama is amazing. The stories are amazing. So okay, so there's also thinking about artists. Do artists have to struggle? No. No. Does anyone have to struggle? No. But it happens. It does. Okay. So again, this is not coming up as true for you. So are you willing to destroy the belief that artists have to struggle? Yes. <laughs> <coughs> Got a stuff there. Yeah. Good. Okay. Are you willing to destroy your love of drama in your life? Yes. That one's not I know. <laughs> you feel that, right? So this is this is a thing that's it's like a uh, a cross wiring. An artist uh, think that drama has to be a part of their lives in order for them to really be artists. And you can still be an artist and just have this carefree, wonderful life where things go great. Uh, but there's so many that are in this place. There's the struggling artist thing. Everyone's heard about that, right? And uh, there's this, there we go, that's good. The more shoes, things are gonna shift. Um, there is this need for being in drama, uh, basically being on stage for the world. And, uh, yeah, and she's, but... she's starting to shift here, that's why she's broken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so when you're willing to not be on stage for the world and just be doing your thing for you, then you can create a whole different reality. So. Are you willing to step off, to keep, take your drama off stage for the world? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Although I have a question. Yep. Um, so when you say that drama yep. for the world, it's like, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't like drama, but I do, I, I love drama in school. I took drama yeah. and I love, and I loved, like, I love performing, but I, but my performance, all of my performance is not about, like, planning what you're going to say or think or do. It's more about exposing the feeling, the thoughts and the initial moments that are happening between the body and, and you. So that's combining the movement, the choreographic and 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 the and the music and the art and that is and and the and the words. But words are not very necessary when you have the movement because the movement is the words. So um, I want the whole world to see this. In that in that way, not is what is ha what has happened. Do you know what has happened? And, but this is the thing: the, sub the subconscious doesn't uh, tend to divide things up. It's like, okay, I can have drama if it's this, and and but not if it's this, not if it's this. If you love drama, your subconscious is like, let's create drama because I love drama, right? And that's that's where you get into these issues. So, um, are you willing to destroy the belief? that in order to have, in order to love drama and have drama in your life, it ha the drama has to be about you. Am I willing to decide? That, that in order to love drama and have drama in your life, the drama has to be about you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would mean that I need to, that, that would mean that the, what I'm, bringing out is not just, it's not just, it's not just what I'm feeling, but uh, although at the same time, what I'm feeling is not necessarily what is all my feelings. It's everybody else's feelings too, it could be, you know, because yeah. like, so, you know, in that, when you say if I'm not going to destroy the belief that, it, you know, the drama, then that would be saying that. 
Well, yeah, there's a lot of drama in the world. All right. And a lot of people love drama. A lot of people like to get more and more drama in their lives. People feel alive when there's drama in their life, right? But they, they don't realize that they, they can feel alive when there isn't that much drama, when there's, when there's ease, when there's joy. Right? Uh, a lot of people cross by our passion and drama. Right? They, they figure in order to have a passionate relationship, there's got to be a lot of drama in there. They go in and get out, and then you can feel all that anger, and then suddenly it's love, and it's, it's a lot of drama, but it's not really the passion they're looking for. So, um, okay, that's actually moving down. Yeah. <laughs> so, what would, again, I'm going to ask you, what would happen if you stopped creating all these stories that you've been telling us about, all these stories of drama in your life? Would you actually, would you get bored? No. 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 Notice how I long it took you to, to answer that question, <laughs> right? That's... Like that, that's your not, your that whole is. energy just sort of jerked when I asked that question. Like, oh wait, uh, like no, no, well, no. That was that was a whole. Yeah, I'd be incredibly bored if I didn't have this in my life. Do you need I, this? I, I am bored. I am bored of what's going on right now. What you bored. described did not seem boring at all. But it is boring. <laughs> it's so boring because it's not creating. So you need it's to not make creating. It, you know, in the evolution of what I'm creating, what, you know, it's creating like, I don't know, like it's creating the same patterns that are being created by, yep. by society. It's like, it's, it's like, I'm so do you yeah. need to make things even bigger and more dramatic in order not to be bored? No, definitely. No, 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 not in no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like in my, you know, in my, in my music and the dance and the show, that's got to be the thing. Like that's got to be the big firecracker, you know, that's got to be the big, like awakening, the big surprise yeah, that people that. are going to see and be like, oh, that's different. I never saw that before. But like, it's all this kind of drama you're creating, inspiring to your shows and your music. It might be a bit inspired. Yeah. So that's coming out as true. <laughs> so, are you willing to destroy the belief that you need to create this kind of drama, this kind of stress and, and adversity, in order to be inspired for the things that you want to create? Yeah. <coughs> Ooh. Okay, how's that feel? It feels true, I guess. How's your body feel now? I have like a stomach, sort of stomach cramp thing happening, but I think it might be also because the nachos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're looking a little different now. So, okay. Are you willing to destroy the belief that you need adversity in order to have inspiration? I, I don't have that belief. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm about to say ow here because the resistance coming off you is great. <laughs> so. And it's funny because, you know, even if you feel you don't have that belief, you could just say, yeah, I'm willing to destroy that belief. Yeah. But you're like, no, I don't have that belief. You're like pushing it back. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you willing to destroy the belief that you need to have adversity in order to have inspiration? Definitely. <laughs> Hey, this is Shiraz. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. And you can check out upcoming events at www.energeticmagic.com. And remember, 
be well, be aware, and be magical.